Hi, I'm Ben, and in this video I'm going to talk about a virtual instrument that I made out of this viola da gamba. I primarily play cello, and a gamba is kind of like a cello, but there's some key differences, like you've got the frets here, and it's six strings, like tuned in fourths, and then you got a third in the middle. Kind of like a guitar, actually. Here's a cello bow next to the gamba bow. They're a little differently shaped, and I think that affects the balance a bit. You're also supposed to hold them differently, so this is how you hold the cello bow and then the gamba. It's like chopsticks. It's underhand. After experimenting and playing around a lot with the gamba, I decided what I wanted to record and ended up splitting that up into two NKIs. The first NKI, which we're looking at here, is a collection of articulations that I liked. First off here, we have a pretty standard sustained articulation. If you play loud, you get this extra sound. There's an extra accent at the beginning. That accent is a separately recorded sample, which gets layered in with the sustained sound. And for each of the pitches, I recorded three different attack sounds. And then I scripted it so that Contact would randomly choose one of those three attack sounds. When I played loud and soft and compared the timbres that you get at these different dynamics, I noticed a pretty big difference and I wanted to capture that. So I recorded two dynamic layers and you can crossfade between those with the mod wheel. The next articulation here is the endless bow, and it's basically the same as the long bow. I just edited out the bow changes. It just sounds very continuous. Oh, kind of handy. The next articulation is a bit less standard. In the virtual instruments I've made so far, I've really enjoyed playing around with Ponticello because it's a really cool technique that strings can do. So for the viola da gamba, I wanted to do that but I noticed the sound is really different and that's part of why I wanted to capture it. It has a kind of metallic quality to it. The reason that the ponticello on the gamba sounds so different than ponticello on other instruments is because of the type of strings that are used. Most modern instruments use steel strings and they have a really nice, even, warm tone. But on old Baroque instruments, they used gut, which is like from animals. And it's a lot more elastic -y. And um, I'm sure the gombo that I was using for this was not using actual gut. I'm sure it was like nylon or some kind of synthetic thing. But anyways, the strings that are not steel have a much more nasally quality to them. Yeah, it's a much less stable tone. So that's why the scratch sounds so dramatically dissonant. This articulation at the bottom here, the tremolo, is kind of what you'd expect, tremolo. But I, I added another dynamic layer, a dynamic layer that's ponticello. Yeah, I think the word would be wiry for the way that the ponticello sounds. It makes for a really dramatic color change. All of these articulations, of course, you could uh, layer together and experiment to see how they sound together. Um, for instance, you know, in the first column, if you were to layer like this and this together, that might be kind of cool. The 
these next two articulations here, the trills and turns, I got pretty fancy with the scripting. I made it so that if you play notes that are half steps apart or whole steps, then you get trills. <laughs> the direction that you play the notes changes the direction of the trill. So this works for the turns as well, of course. These patches are an example of something that you could use very conventionally, but also if you just mash keys, interesting stuff tends to happen. From the little bit of Baroque playing that I've done, and just the, all the Baroque music that I've listened to, trills and ornaments and things like that are kind of common. And then also when you have long notes, Baroque players like to go like, whoa, it just seems to be a thing. As opposed to romantic, um, romantic style playing where everything is super sustained and fast vibrato. Mm. It's very graceful and woomphy. The swell, I'm not sure this would be Baroque, but it sounds cool. For the next three articulations, the staccato, the ricochet, and the pizzicato, they're all percussive sounds. And when sampling percussive things, a lot of times you want to use round robins because otherwise you get the infamous machine gun effect. So I went pretty gung-ho with the round robins and um, for the ricochet I actually have 12 round robins. So here's the staccato. Here's the ricochet. So they're both short, but you know, notice they're kind of a different type of short. What I did here is um, the staccato ones are coming from the string, and the ricochet ones are ricocheting the bow off the string, bouncing it on the string. And um, yeah, they're just two very different sounding types of staccato. There are doubtless lots of pizzicato patches in existence, so I wanted to just experiment and make a pizzicato articulation that would do something interesting or different. With this pizzicato, I was playing around with um, picking the string, like using a like a guitar pick versus using your finger. And I discovered that if you have the picked sound be the loud velocity layer and then the plucked sound be the soft velocity layer, it actually works pretty seamlessly. The other thing that I wanted to explore more was the place on the string that you pluck it. Because if you pluck the string really close to the bridge, you get a really different sound versus in the middle. So I did the two velocity layers in two different parts of the string, and you can use the mod wheel to crossfade between those different parts of the string.
All right, last articulation. I mentioned before how the gut strings are so different than the steel strings on most modern instruments. And while I was recording, I was trying to still get a nice warm sound, and I decided for one articulation to just not get a warm sound and make the nastiest, most constipated sound that I could. So for this articulation, just imagine that you're um, an 80-year-old person and uh, imagine you're like in the 1800s and it's like a peasant and they're playing their hurdy-gurdy at home after a long day's work in the fields. Um, that's kind of what I wanted this to sound like. It's a little out of tune, kind of crunchy, grinding into the string. Yeah, so if you wanted to emulate a hurdy-gurdy, this might be a, a starting point for that. Here is the second NKI. It's a collection of short rhythms which are designed to be strung together in order to create realistic ostinato patterns. There are two ways to play the instrument. Here's the first way. If you uh, hit the key switches down here, or you can also just click on the, the rhythms themselves, then you can uh, get that rhythm. Like so. And the nice thing about this way of playing is that you can layer together as many of these as you want. So for instance, I think this sounds really cool if you layer together the, the 16th note rhythms. That way you get the constant 16ths. The other way to play is pattern mode. When you turn this guy on, then when you click on these, it sticks them into this sequence here. And, um, and now you can go like this. And it loops the, this pattern. If you find a pattern that you particularly like and want to hold on to, you can map it to notes of the keyboard, like so. So let's say you like did another one, map it, there we go. And now you can switch between patterns that you've made. If you want to get rid of these mappings down here, what you can do is just map an empty sequence or an empty pattern to one of these keys and then it'll clear it. Like so. So with the pattern mode, if you go if you go like that and you're starting notes at different times, they don't sync up with each other, which can be kind of cool. It makes things get dense really quickly. Um, I thought it would be nice to also have this legato mode so that any notes that you add on start in sync with the previous ones. So now it'll go like this. So it's really handy to have them all sync up. The last thing to mention is this stereo button here. And all this does is put two different instances of the rhythm in your left and right ear. Well, there's the instrument. I hope you've found this interesting, and um, thanks for watching.